Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. Today's video we will be diving into SavvyCal, which is a scheduling tool application for calendar events. Booking your appointments can be done through this application. I'll be giving you an overview, sharing some of my opinion and how the application works. Most recently Woven has shut down um, and will be shutting down in the end of May. Um, so this is an alternative to potentially the scheduling element of Woven. Now before we begin, our sponsor today is Clip up here's a little bit more about them so this month's sponsor on Keep Productive is ClickUp. And if you haven't heard of ClickUp already, it's a powerful productivity platform designed to be the one place for all your work. Now it's great to have them back on as a sponsor to Keep Productive and ClickUp has over 200,000 teams using them to get organized and how know everything from to-do lists to resource management. Now with the ability to change views, ClickUp offers a flexible way for teams to design their own workspaces to get things done and with a huge host of integrations, they can connect with tools they're already using. Most recently, they've added the ability to email externally inside of ClickUp without leaving the workspace. Now, ClickUp are offering an exciting discount off their business and enterprise plans. You can find out a little bit more below. And thank you guys again for coming on. And do check them out in the description below. Anyway, guys, thank you very much. Talk soon. So here we are with Savvy Cow. Now, as you can see here, um, it's a very simple layout. What I quite liked about the setup is you can link up your Google Calendar or your Microsoft Outlook Calendar, and also you can connect up Whereby or Zoom. And naturally, if you have Google and you use Google Meet, it has that connection too. So it automatically integrates with those applications, which is pretty handy. Now, this is the layout you have when you get started. Um, I'm actually not even on the free trial yet. There's a seven day free trial to actually be able to activate your links but i'll cover the pricing first which i think is probably the the thing that people normally uh, whether it deters them or not so the pricing is free for the first seven days um, to get used to it however you actually do sign up to it so you'd need to cancel it in order to take the free trial without it getting charged after seven days however on the basic plan you get unlimited scheduling links unlimited calendar and unlimited events for the price of 12 dollars per user per month they do have team plans and also premium plan which removes the savvy cow branding on scheduling links now one of the things that i'd say about this application in comparison to the pricing of calendarly is that savvy cow is not actually as good in value in my opinion so looking here um, you can see that if we put the billing on monthly of calendarly you can connect one calendar uh, and you can have unlimited events you can have one event type and that's for free so that's a pretty decent sort of option for the basic plan. They don't actually have any in Savvy Cow. For the premium, which is probably equivalent to the basic plan of Savvy Cow, you do get two calendar accesses so you can maybe do a work one or a personal one. And it does connect with more than just um, Microsoft Outlook and Google Cow. Connects with I iCloud, which is pretty handy. You can have unlimited event types, which is actually the limitation in the free plan. And you also get um, a removable Calendly brand. So that's actually locked on the premium account, which is $20 per user per month. Now, both of them have team plans, so that is an option there. Just wanted to clarify at the start because the pricing is a little bit steeper. But you do, in my opinion, as we'll explain later on, uh, get a really beautiful looking product. One that does some slightly easier things, I would say, than Calendly. But let's let's dive in. I am actually a user of Woven, so I've come from a Calendar Plus scheduling experience. So just to give you that note there. So if you want to go ahead and create scheduling, you go to the top right hand corner. You can choose whether it's yourself or a team member, that uh, a team that you're working with. So in this case, it's just myself. So this appears, um, and this is quite nice as a visual layout to help manage your scheduling link. So if I want to organize it so that uh, I have a podcast meeting, so this is something that I might do on a routine basis, hence why you might want to give it a private name at the top, so like um, podcasts, and click save. You can see that you can set things like the duration. So in this case, my podcast typically take 45 minutes. I can set it to a preset, which is quite cool. So a preset basically gives you like a, a set of hours and limits. So for example, in this case, it's work hours. So anything before five and after 9 a.m. So you can see that it's sort of 
giving me available slots blocking out from the other times. I'll, I'll go into more detail on that. So for example, I saw an, a good example of somebody using a custom availability. Um, so you can go to custom availability, uh, but sorry, edit here. Uh, you can actually add a preset uh, availability, basically a custom availability of say your recording days or your uh, meeting days so that you give yourself a bit of sort of flexibility uh, with that specific setup. So this might be a traditional working day for you, but you could, for example, have, you know, say like a uh, recording day and which might not give you like, for example, only give you the afternoons available on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So you could, for example, make that available. So if I, uh, if I go back and I go back up to scheduling links and go to edit, and I can press recording day. So you can see that obviously no, no times are available minus these little sort of Wednesday, Friday. So you can make these sort of nice sort of templates to some extent and little setups here. You can also have it built in, like I said, um, you can have a Zoom call uh, automatically built in so that will produce an automatic link which will save you a few moments and you can pre-fill the recipient's name and email address so that they get an invite or for example if you put in Steve you can customize the introduction so um, there's some people like having a customized um, calendar link so if I said podcast meeting with Steve you can also add team members if they want to join in and the settings pages I'd say is quite advanced but we'll touch on that in a moment because it does go a little bit deeper than you think so I really like the fact that you can overlay your calendar to be able to see the sort of interaction you've got there. And um, I'll show you in a moment what this sort of looked like in a preview mode. So if I go to preview, you go to bottom left hand corner, you can go and preview the link. And this is what the other person would see on the call. So you can start to see that the Zoom is organized for five minutes, Steve and me, and you can see that it's uh, given there. So the other person that's viewing this I believe can use the overlay my calendar option to bring in what calendar events they have and how it uh, interrupts their schedule. I quite like that and I believe it works and that's how it works with anyone uh, as long as you've got a Google and Microsoft account I believe. But that's pretty handy. That's something that if you take for example uh, Calendarly you don't really get a visual option. You for example could just go okay Friday this March 9.30 and confirm. It's not really like very visual and uh, some people like having like oh okay I've got that on at three but you can't actually see that with the, the calendarly experience. So that's something decent. You can also duplicate it and embed it if you want to. So you can link that on your website and that might be useful for somebody that, for example, is taking in client bookings and things like that. Now moving forward, you can see that obviously all these slots are available and you can do the things like allow, force allow. Um, so that's quite awesome. Now on the actual, when you get started, you cannot actually make the link active without using the upgrade so that's something to note this is not a free product you get free trial but you don't get anything free per se okay so one of the things that i find pretty impressive inside this application and something that i liked in the likes of woven is the settings so one thing you can do is go really detailed with the settings so you can create events on a certain you know for example a certain detail like you know, create them on this uh, events calendar, the calendar you may have connected. And also you can give them a link, name and address, as well as updating the body of the invite. You can ask a few questions as well. And this is decent, for example, for collecting, you know, like certain details, like, do you have a good microphone? Do you, you know, have a quiet space to work in, etc. So that people may need to know that information beforehand, gathering useful information. Now, as you can see here, you've got some buffers and limits. This is what I really like in applications like this, giving you a bit of time in between meetings so that you don't overload yourself. And you can see minimum notice as well. That's what I really like as well some applications don't include this but it essentially allows you to give for example if you sent a link and they were about to book you just for the next 10 minutes in 10 minutes time that might be a bit too fast so you can set like a like like for example if you're not if you want to prepare for a meeting you want to feel organized then you can set it to 24 hours etc so you can limit how far people book in front of you this might be useful for booking holiday and limit frequent schedule frequency as well which is something that a lot of people like you've also got start increments um, you can set that based on the frequency of available times and also how many email reminders you want and when you want them placed so that's some of the settings i will show you a few more settings that are available so that's my sort of managing scheduling you can see that I've 
got that ready and you can see that this one's been specifically created for somebody so as you can see anything that does uh, get scheduled pops up in events in upcoming you can see also past and cancelled events here so one thing i do like is the settings page you can change your personal url here as well um, and you can change the password links are quite handy to be able to edit that availability and you can see you can see all the stuff that i had here and on the premium plan, you can add your own branding, I believe, or no, you can just hide the Savvy Cal branding, which is a bit of a shame because I guess with the basic plan, you should get that, but that's just my opinion. Now from here, you can actually go ahead and create teams, which is pretty handy if you want to start using this with team members. So as you can see here, you've got Zoom video conferencing set up here and you can add the whereby one there. So if you change between the two and you can get the billing from here. If you do want to check out Savvy Cal, there's a link in the description, which is an affiliate link. So if you do like it, then you can definitely take advantage of that. And there is, uh, if you do go through that link, you get free, two, three free months when you pay annually. So all in all, Savvy Cal is actually a really nice way to book a meeting. It's very visual and that's something that a lot of people like. In my opinion, I like when experiences do this layout and it definitely does allow you a bit more visual freedom especially being able to overlay your calendar be able to set up the pre presets and availabilities it may take a little bit of time to set those templates up but it might be worth it in the long run the pricing is something that i'm pretty i'm more against than i'm not it's 12 dollars per month and that's a limiting factor i guess for a lot of people some people really like having calendarly the very simple one scheduling type like 15 minutes and that is something that they're probably more willing to have than pay for so that's just something to note and something that calendarly in my opinion does a, a slightly better job at in terms of wrapping it up they've actually got a free a, a guide on like how it compares to calendarly obviously this is naturally biased towards them of course um, and you can see the some of the ways that it differs from calendarly now um, there is seem to be a small team at the moment so that's just something to note um, growing as you can imagine but something that you know it's uh it's good in terms of its uh, visual aspects and for those who are willing to pay it might be a decent bet especially with the customization that you can have in the the basic account with the sort of personalized scheduling links but folks if you're looking for a calendar scheduling tool that is uh, very gorgeous and you don't have an necessarily a big uh, or, or a, sorry, a small budget, then that's uh, this is a quite a good application for that and something that looks and works very well and got a great embedding and got great presets and something you might be interested in. Anyway, guys, please do check out all the information in the description below. If anyone's using uh, Savvy Cal, pop them in the comments below. Um, it'd be great to have some opinions on this application. But guys, hopefully you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you all very soon. Cheerio.